I can't help it for. Hey, I just love this week too much. I mean, come on, look at me. I... Oh, hey, hi, it's me, Will the Finger Do, with the Finger Do review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13, Episode 11. Ugh. And before I get started, I just want to thank my tipper dues. Thanks to Glenn Gore, the fabulous Kristen Young, Marcus from North Dakota, Don Wonge, please tell me I said your last name correctly, Don, Nate Turpening, not just for the tip, but for calling me kind of sexy, you sweet talker, Nate. I also want to thank Samantha Silveria, who says, I look like a difficult professor of hers who says seriously a lot. I hate to tell you, Samantha, we are the same person. I mean, have you ever seen us in the same room? Seriously. This week, I also want to thank a couple of Redbubble models. First off, Martha got a new phone case, which was the perfect place for her Larda Souza Sweet Marie sticker. Now that's how you upgrade a phone. And Micah or Mike or uh, Sade, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but I know you from Instagram and you got your Denise Jerno Wilma lips mask. Wear it well, Mike, Moika, Sade. Speaking of Instagram, I am bringing back two of my favorite Denise Jerno t-shirt designs. These were from Denise's Halloween series last year and two of my biggest sellers. I retired them after Halloween, but I love them too much not to make them available. They're both on Redbubble right now. And that link is down below. Shut your face. Now, Jorge, drink me. Ooh, what is this, uh, Amarga Wilma? <laughs> mm. This is my easy margarita. It's basically just tequila and fresca. Mm, so delish, Olay. So we started this episode off with a very emotional farewell to Denali. Olivia was feeling it for sure. And combine that with the beating her ego took on failing to express her brand is probably why she had so much trouble cleaning that mirror. I'm so serious. Simone and Utica were congratulated for their win, a first one for Utica and a third for Miss Simone. Well done to both of you, serious. Of course, they also had to talk about the dreaded question. Who should go home? Even though the majority of the queens said her name, Olivia wasn't taking it personally, and good for her. It wasn't personal. If she'd done the best job and they all said her name, well, then it would have been personal. But she really did the worst of everyone in transforming her partner. Of course, Candy didn't buy it for a minute. Simone asked Candy how she felt about her name being said too, but Let's be honest, Candy's name was only said by Denali and she went home, so who cares? Am I right? Also, can I ask, who else believed Denali's excuse for saying Candy's name? She said she called out Candy because she knew she was strong enough to take it. Personally, I think Denali spun it like that because she was afraid of getting the Tamisha treatment from Miss Muse. Lord knows I would be. The next day in the workroom, Simone asked the queens who was shocked they were still there. The answer was no one. In fact, they all seemed shocked that Simone would ask such a thing in the first place. Tina and Rosé continued their rivalry of words as they both shaded the other into an early exit. God bless Candy Muse. In an attempt to point out the positive, she said, well, at least Tina won $25,000. She meant 2,500. Whoever won a quarter of the grand prize in a mini challenge, I ask you. I have to admit, I'm one of those people who can get tripped up over a decimal place too. So. I was feeling her. Mind you, I might be better with decimal points if I actually had any money, so I don't know. So, while the other queens tried to give Candy a math lesson, they were interrupted by RuPaul's video message. This week's message was all about getting a J-O-B, and, well, that clearly <laughs> confused a couple of the queens, well, until Ru arrived with this week's mini challenge. Are you smarter than the pit crew? Yeah! Jason, Bruno, and Bryce are back. I like this mini challenge. The pit crew asked Drag Race trivia questions via video for the queens to answer. There were questions about Alyssa Edwards, Lil Pound Cake, and makeover challenges. Hey, Sarge. There were many fabulous questions, but to be honest, I think I blacked out when I heard Bruno's accent. Just me? <laughs> Ironically, the last question was a math problem, and guess who got it right? You candy muse. Probably because the answer didn't have a decimal point. And with that correct answer, Candy was the winner of the mini challenge and won $25,000 gift card. I know, I know, I'm trying to be ironic. 
And then it was maxi challenge time. The queens were going to have to create and brand their own soft drink, including the name, designing the can, and even coming up with their own jingle for a 45 second commercial. Olivia was worried. She failed to brand herself on another queen, so she was even more worried to brand herself on a soft drink. As the queens brainstormed, Tina shared her ideas with Olivia. It was a lot for Tina to cram into 45 seconds and clearly, Olivia wasn't feeling it. Rosé created a hangover remedy for her soft drink that would poke fun at her perfectionistic ways that Tina wasn't buying. Although, why Tina was worried about anyone else with her Spielberg-esque plans hanging over her head is anyone's guess. God bless Utica. Licking her can aside, sounds dirty, I'm with Simone. Sometimes I feel that she's often being weird for creativity's sake without really thinking it through. The one thing that Gottmik had learned about herself this season was that she doesn't care. She's happy to go with the flow even if she looks silly doing it. Her soft drink was gonna help people do just that. The one thing I wish Gottmik had cared more about was her storyboard. She needed to have some things shot out of order because they involved water. So instead of writing it sequentially, she created this confusing jigsaw puzzle that at the end of the day, even she couldn't follow, seriously. And then they were interrupted by Rue's video message call, but this time it wasn't a message from Rue. It was season 12 winner Jada Essence Hall. Look over there! She was there to help the queen stay focused and give them advice. Simone asked Jada if there was anything she wished she'd done during her season. Her answer was that they're responsible for their journey on Drag Race. Every moment she didn't enjoy her time on Drag Race became a moment she didn't do well. If you feel you're gonna do badly, she said, you will. Good point. Rose asked if Jada knew she was gonna win. Although she didn't say whether she knew she was going to win, Jada said, she was going to make it to the top four. Just do the work and it'll happen, she said. And then she pointed out that the winner of season 13 was standing in that room right now. That seemed to inspire the queens beyond measure, I'm so serious. And then it was on to filming their commercials with Ross Matthews and Carson Kressley, who were on hand more to advise than to actually direct. And can I just ask, is Ross Matthews the only person who's lost weight during lockdown? Seriously. Tina went first and all seemed to go well until Ross suggested a certain wording for the line, Victoria is not the only one with a secret, which Tina never got right. And she kicked that can all over the studio, seriously. Rosé was next and her filming went well, probably because of her perfectionistic ways. <laughs> I loved that she wore a dressing gown from the Jan collection. From the laughs she was getting from Ross and Carson, it looked like she did well too. Olivia was next, and not to beat a dead Denali, but this is the outfit she should have used for the last challenge, I'm so serious. As for her commercial, she was another one who didn't process the advice she was being given, which is too bad. Simone was next, and the minute I heard her soda was called Sweet Tooth with an F, I knew she was gonna win. I agree with Carson, that queen makes anything sound fabulous. Of course, her writing had a lot to do with it too, seriously. Utica was next. Why does she always have to wear glasses was my first question. And then she started suckling on that cow and licking that can. And I forgot what I was thinking. The worst thing, I could never unsee that. Lord knows I'm trying. Candy was next. And although I didn't get what she was going on about, I'd be lying if I didn't say I giggled watching her try, I'm so serious. As predicted, Gottmik's convoluted storyboard seemed to trip her up, and her concept confused Ross and Carson even more. I didn't think even the editors would be able to help make sense of that, seriously. Then it was elimination day, and as the queens were getting ready, Olivia asked the room how they were feeling about their commercials. Most of the girls felt good no matter how their filming went, which Gottmik thought made them all sound like narcissists. Really? People who spend all that time looking in the mirror and applying makeup to themselves are narcissists? I don't see it. Candy wanted to know what everyone's brand was outside of Drag Race. Okay, let's be honest, Candy couldn't care less about that, but she knows how to ask a question when the producers ask her to. <laughs> Tina said hers was fire, but I feel it really was just the colors, red, yellow, and orange. I have to admit, Tina wasn't the only one who was surprised to hear Rosé brands herself as a comedian. 
I don't think she's made me laugh once this whole season. Not that she's not talented. I just don't think she's funny. Candy said at home people see her as a firecracker, but she still felt she's really shown her softer side on Drag Race. And then she told the tale of getting gay bashed at school. I was heartbroken. I know I was picked on when I was in school, but I was never bashed. Probably because I was 6'4 since birth. But to be jumped by three kids and to be sent to the hospital with a broken arm? What is wrong with people? And for those of you out there who don't think online bullying is just as bad, shame on you. Let's all take a moment to send some love to Miss Candy Muse, seriously. And then it was time for the runway. Rue looked stunning, but her boobs were a little wall-eyed. One was looking over there and the other one seemed to be digging for chips. Joining Rue on the judges panel was the springtime fresh Michelle Visage, along with the always well-heeled Carson Kressley and the incredibly shrinking Ross Matthews. Seriously. Category is Beast Couture. Utica was first and my only critique was that her horns weren't a bit bigger. But besides that, I thought her look was the most elegant thing she's worn yet. I have no idea what the hell Candy was wearing. It felt to me like she forgot to put a look together for this category and then threw this together at the last minute. I think she could have sold it more if she left that alien at home. Seriously. I love Tina's runway. This was fun and whimsical, and even though it still had red, orange, and yellow in it, they weren't the dominant colors, so I could live with it. And then Foxy Simone hit the stage. God, this look was beyond perfect. From the side swoop bangs to those brilliant boots padded to look like a dog's hind leg, I couldn't stop staring at this or sweating because with all that fun fur, it looked hot. Not in a sexy way. I love Got Mixed Runway too. From the shoulder eyes to the jagged tooth skirt, it was fabulous. Olivia was another one whose runway impressed me, but then, ever since Monsters, Inc., I've always been partial to blue fur. Rosé was next and I loved her runway too. Not just because it was gorgeous, but because it was a totally different look for her, seriously. Then it was time to see the Queen's commercials. Utica's was first and I actually had problems watching it. And from the judges' critiques, so did they. Ross still didn't know what her soda did. Michelle liked her runway, but like me, she wasn't blown away. Candy's commercial wasn't as entertaining as it looked during filming. I wish Candy could have changed her voice up for the voiceover just to give it some variety. And what was up with that milk? Is that what her soft drink looks like? White Yoohoo? Because that was my drag queen name in high school. Carson thought her commercial was funny, but that seemed to be because of her personality. I still don't know what Michelle thought of the commercial, but she did not like Candy's runway. Surprise, surprise. But the bigger surprise was that Ross did. Tina's commercial was a big letdown to me, but at least she wore that big red wig finally. Ross loved her runway because it's not what he expected her to wear. Yet, Michelle said she was starting to feel that Tina was becoming predictable. Personally, I just found her boring. Thank God Simone's commercial was next because I needed a laugh after all of that. This was a great example of how to stick to your point and keep it simple. All the jokes landed and Simone looked fabulous doing it. But I'm not surprised. She's rocked every acting challenge so far and the judges agreed. Here's to Simone, seriously. Got Mix commercial was next and I was right. The editors couldn't save it. All I can say is that thank goodness her runway slayed because her commercial did not. Rue hit it on the head and there were complaints when she said that irony is hard to explain to people. So was Got Mix commercial. Olivia's commercial wasn't much better, but at least I understood what was going on. I agree with Ross. Olivia's bubbly personality overshadowed her message, but Michelle was beyond impressed by her beasty runway. Finally, we had Rosé's commercial, which I thought came off better because so many of the others didn't. Don't get me wrong, I didn't hate it, I just didn't love it. Michelle thought it was smart and funny and showed a playful side she felt Rosé hadn't shown them so far. Carson thought her runway could have been part of a Vegas Shakespeare production by Bob Mackey. What is Bob Mackey doing these days? As the queens made their way to the untucked lounge, Tina was confused. She thought she ticked all the challenge boxes, but the judge's reactions told her another tale. As the queens untucked and those that could deferred, Simone lamented her decision to wear a costume that was head to toe fun fur, but Rosé pointed out that her positive critiques were well worth the discomfort. 
As for the critiques, Candy was happy with how the judges felt towards her commercial, but the more important point was that she liked it. Olivia's biggest critique was that she always looked so happy all the time, which really isn't the worst thing to be told. Utica jumped in by admitting that her commercial was the worst, and no one argued with her, even though she asked, hey, as long as she had fun. Rosé felt great about her commercial, but was convinced that Simone was going to win the challenge. Tina was still confused by the round-the-way critique she got. The judges were complimentive, but there was also a but. You did all these things well, but you're getting predictable. The other queens tried to quantify the judges' comments for Tina, but it just seemed to provoke her. What provoked me was Rosé singing her clap back at Tina. That's just what you did. Just me? To change the subject slightly, Simone asked who thought they might be lip syncing. Well, Utica was a strong yes. I'm glad Simone asked Gottmik how she felt because I was beginning to think that no one had a problem with her commercial. This was Gottmik's first time not being in the top and it was definitely a new feeling for her. But regardless, she was confident enough to know she was not going home. For some reason, the talk morphed into an impromptu candy love-in. Quite a few of the queens still saw candy as competition, and all I can think is that they're confusing talent with personality. If this contest was about personality, candy would be sending all those queens home. But there was nothing competitive about candy for me this week, and it's not the first time. Tina listed the usual suspects as her competition. Gottmik, Candy, Simone, but nowhere on that list was Olivia, much to her chagrin. If I were her, I'd just focus on doing my best, not worrying who thought what about me. It's like she never won those two challenges back to back, seriously. Suddenly, the room was interrupted by a message for Tina Burner from her mom, Sue. This was a very lovely message, but the most emotional part was after when Tina talked about her life helping her mother deal with depression and being bipolar, plus, her difficult relationship with her father. It all added up to her growing up so fast and not feeling good enough, poor thing. And then it was time to head back to the main stage. I don't think anyone was surprised to hear that Simone was this week's winner. What was a surprise was, so was Rosé. That's four for Simone and two for Rosé. Here's to both those queens. Well done, seriously. Landing in the bottom this week was Utica and Tina. I was surprised by that. I thought for sure it was going to be Gottmik. Maybe that runway is what helped her stay safe. Either way, Tina was not happy about it. As far as this lip sync went, I was impressed with Tina's performance. She was fun and flirty, throwing down all the old school moves, but Utica sold the hell out of this song. She worked that outfit, the house, down. So when the music stopped, I wasn't surprised that Utica chanted. But that didn't stop me from gagging at Tina being the seventh queen to sashay away. Were you gagged? Don't get me wrong. I'm so happy to not have to look at red, yellow, and orange for a while. But I really did see Tina turning it around. I may need to get me some glasses. What about Utica? Do you agree with her being safe? What about Gottmik? Should she have lip sync? If she had, I have no doubt that she would have been the one to sashay. Maybe that's why Rue didn't put her there. I guess we'll never know. One thing's for sure, that elimination shook up the rest of the queens. I hope Olivia can pull it together or else I fear she'll be next in the chopper. I guess we'll all have to tune into RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 next week to see what happens. And when you're done, you come on back and you see me so you and I can compare notes. Now, don't forget to like this video if you did and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And until next week, miss me. Mwah. Seriously. I'm gagged that Tina went home. Seriously, I thought for sure she was going to make top four. You know what would shock me is if Olivia went home next week. I think that she's a strong queen, but she's starting to get into her head, and, and, and I don't mean that in a sexy way. There's been complaints, is what I'm saying. You know where there aren't complaints? In this glass. Yum. Seriously, Jorge. Those sirens have been going for a half an hour. What could possibly be on fire? There's nobody outside.